How you doing guys? Welcome back to another Medic Mind Gamsa video. My name is Harry and today we're going to be giving you 10 quick and easy tips to help you prepare for section one, reasoning in humanities and social sciences. So jumping straight in, tip number one is practice. Sample papers need to be something that you use from the start and always come back to. Think of sample papers as both the foundation and the framework on which to build your strategy to tackle this enormous exam. You also need to consider that sample papers are there to help you identify the gaps in your knowledge and the gaps in your performance. What is letting you down? What topics need to be covered? What things can you improve on? And so sample papers really pave the way for you to figure out how to begin and to continue to study the GAMSAT day in, day out. So tip number two is familiarize yourself with different styles. You're going to see cartoons, poems and passages and it's really important that you have a strategy for each of these types of questions and the reason why is because the questions associated with different styles, i.e. the questions associated with a cartoon, would be very different to those that might be associated with a poem. And so you need to have individual strategies for each so that you feel comfortable answering them all, regardless of which ones come up. So tip number three is familiarizing yourself with the phrasing of questions. Now, this is something I always talk to people about when it comes to the GAMSAT. And the reason why is because the phrasing is very, very particular with certain questions. For example, you might see questions that look for you to suggest what the best answer is, but they might say something like, what is the most appropriate answer here? And that suggests that more than one of the multiple choice options could be considered to be a correct answer, but is it the most appropriate in the circumstance you're dealing with? And so the phrasing of questions in the GAMSA is something that can trip you up and something you have to get used to make sure that you're comprehending properly. Tip number four is time yourself. Now, this again is a really important tip that I always refer to. And the reason why is because if you take practice exams with double the time, you might feel as though you've done very well and you might look at your performance, you've answered a lot of questions well, but that is really not mimicking the actual exam itself. What you need to do is to time yourself with the times that you would be allocated in the actual GAMSAT so that you're putting yourself under pressure. If you just go through questions time after time without timing yourself, you may have the time to think about it in different ways and to look at a question multiple times to try and figure out what it is they're asking. But in the GAMSAT, one of the trickiest things is dealing with the lack of time that you have. And so having an approach to deal with things quickly is built based upon you doing practice in timed circumstances. So when it comes to papers, by all means, start on times to get used to the style of question. But once you're comfortable, take, past, take sample papers using timed circumstances, because that is really how you mimic the exam that you're going to ultimately be sitting. Tip number five is improve your reading speed. Now, this is something that I really focused on in the last couple of months leading up to the GAMSAT, but also even further back, I was really trying to read more in general, but particularly reading different resources. So look, for example, to use a certain newspaper. Also, if you have some free time, maybe read a novel and also maybe use some scientific articles because different styles of writing are going to come up in this section. And so you can't just focus on maybe reading novels, but you need to look at different styles so that you're prepared for everything. Another one, a weakness of mine, for example, was poetry. So I focused on trying to find different poems and really try and have a strategy for how I can get through them quickly, but also comprehend what's going on. And even just reading a lot of resources frequently, you'll be amazed how much quicker you'll begin to read when you start to do these questions. And one other thing is reading versus skimming. So part of your strategy in the GAMSAT is going to be when do I need to skim certain questions and when do I need to really read it? So when I came across poetry, for example, these were questions I tended to leave towards the end of my section one time because I found them particularly difficult. But then what I would do is when I do go back to them, I would spend more time on them and not skim them as much as other types of questions. 
So having a strategy like that and just generally taking the time to read more will help you have the ability to do that in the exam. Tip number six is something that I would definitely recommend you do, particularly if your strengths don't lie with your vocabulary. So as someone from a science background for a long, long time, I was someone who came into this exam really needing to improve my English and my literature. And so taking notes on new and unfamiliar phrases and words is something that is really, really useful. And the reason why is because it's going to improve your vocabulary and the likelihood that you will comprehend more passages that you read. But also it's gonna be relevant for section two, which we will talk about as well, that really focuses your vocabulary and really broadens your vocabulary to enable you to look at different passages and be comfortable with them. One of the most difficult things in passages is it only takes a couple of words that you won't understand for you to really not have a good grasp on the whole passage itself. So tip number seven, revise literary techniques and poetic devices and kind of generally looking at literature and the different ways in which you can articulate it. And one of the reasons for this is we think about things like paradox, metaphor, onomatopoeia. There are a lot of different things where just having an idea as to what these techniques are, why they might be used and how they add to a passage is really important. It's one thing to understand words, but the manipulation and the articulation of those words is something that can change a passage completely. So going over some literary literacy techniques is really useful to help you comprehend more passages, more even, for example, cartoons. You might see them on the posters in cartoons. There are many different passages that you will see in section one that will require you to have an understanding of those ideas. And again, these are things that will help you in section two, because if you understand the technique very well, it means you know how to use it yourself. And therefore you can then move this on, move this knowledge on to help you also in the second section. Tip number eight is to correct and analyze your questions. So this is one of my favorite tips to give people. And the reason why is because once we get used to preparing for the GAMSAT, we're pretty comfortable doing sample papers. However, once they're done, that takes quite a chunk of time out of your day. And so you might be quite tired and you say, I've done a sample paper, that's me finished. But what you should really schedule into your weekly or whatever it may be, your monthly schedule for the GAMSAT is analyzing your responses. So particularly for sample papers where you have the answers, you need to look through every question you've gone through and refer to what you said, was it correct, was it incorrect, and what was the logic for the correct answer? Because really what you're trying is to develop strategies that help you hone in on what is likely to be the correct answer and what is likely to be incorrect answers. And the other thing is what you wanna do with this is maybe create a question bank and sort of add to it as you go through sample papers. So particularly questions you struggle with. If you don't include questions that you're comfortable with, that's absolutely fine because you're comfortable with those and you're happy with how you would answer them in the exam situation. But with questions you're struggling with, putting them into a bank, even if it's an Excel sheet or something like that, and reviewing them will allow you to really become more comfortable with the difficult questions. And that really can separate you from other GAMSA candidates who maybe haven't taken the time to improve on those gaps. Tip number nine is to hone your skills with online resources. So at some point we have to deviate from just doing sample papers. And one thing for me, aside from maybe reading various resources is also using multiple resources such as videos. There is so much media out there that can really, really help you on topics you might be struggling with. And that really extends to all the sections of the GAMSAT and no less to section one. If you're really struggling with how to comprehend poetry or the cartoons you really struggle with, there are lots of videos online that you can find. And for example, even Medic Minds website has a lot of tips on how you can improve on certain sections and also has a GAMSAT course, for example, where you can go through particular videos if there's particular topics that you're struggling with and you can simply have a look at those and see does that help you to answer those styles of questions. These videos will help you come up with a strategy that will identify those gaps and really 
stop you from being afraid of certain questions. And this is something that I realized before my GAMSAT was that I needed to realize the things that I was struggling with and rather than shy away from them and just accept that there were some questions I wouldn't get, I would spend the time on those and use online resources and multiple different styles of resources to help me hone the skills to be able to tackle those questions. Tip number 10 finally is developing confidence. This is probably one of the most important things that people struggle with in this exam. It's a long exam, it's a daunting exam, and sometimes no matter how much preparation you do, you mightn't feel confident going into the exam. But one of the things that you should do is to really focus on a couple of core concepts here. The first is read your questions carefully, but relatively quickly, and that practice will get you used to that. Also, don't linger on questions too long. Remember that this GAMSAT is an enormous exam and nobody achieves 100% in the GAMSAT. So remember that there are some questions there that are very, very tricky and that the likelihood is that an enormous cohort of the people sitting the GAMSAT won't actually get that question right. You're not expected to be very familiar with every question that comes up or the style of every question that comes up, regardless of the amount of preparation you've done. And let that sort of mindset help build your confidence when it gets close to this exam and you really have to start honing your skills and just focusing on what you are prepared for. Guys, I hope this video has been useful. These are simple tips to follow to really give you a good framework to build the best skills that you need to tackle any question in the GAMSAT. I hope this helped. Look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a good day. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to unlock the rest of this GAMSAT course, which includes over a thousand GAMSAT questions, 20 hours of GAMSAT tutorials, and hundreds of essay plans, click the link in the description below.